Flight planning considerations. Weather briefing. The following is a review of areas that require the particular attention and consideration of the captain during the briefing. In general, these areas are also of concern in flight and affect decisions regarding destination, choice of alternates, carriage of fuel, etc. Clear air turbulence. Cats should be avoided whenever possible. If it cannot be avoided then it will affect your thoughts on cruise levels and also briefing your cabin crew. At light aircraft weights, it may be possible to climb above the cats and overfly it. More usually and particularly at heavy weights or on short sectors where time at cruise level is brief, it will be preferable to cruise beneath any area of cats. This will avoid or minimize any encounter and has the advantage of improved buffet margins. It should be recognized that this may be detrimental to fuel economy and timekeeping. If CAT is experienced, forecast or in particular reported by aircraft on your route and at your planned cruise level, then cabin service may need to be amended or curtailed for the duration of the event. In which case, you will need to advise the CSD as early as possible, giving appropriate information. CAT can be found on the significant weather charts as well as on the OFP. The wind shear factor on the OFP gives you a good idea of when to expect CAT. Remember the factor varies from 1 to 20. Note. Staying low and widening your buffet margins will give you much greater protection should you encounter any severe cat. If you accept a climb to a level that you can only just make, your margins will be smaller and the presence of any cat should cause you to think seriously about the combination of the two factors. Do not climb to a level close to or above max recommended altitude, as buffet margins will reduce very quickly. CBs and thunderstorm activity. These should be avoided whenever possible. Even the smallest ones are uncomfortable. Consider the passengers, if you are uncomfortable they are in all probability worried, upset, or frightened and many of them will, inevitably, be sick. Consider the cabin crew, they will be similarly affected and if attempting to work in the cabin or galley may be placed in a hazardous situation. The worst CB, thunderstorms are downright dangerous. Consider the output of an active CB with thunderstorms, turbulence, wind shear, icing, very heavy hail and or rain and lightning. These are aircraft damaging and thus life-threatening conditions. Cruise levels may need to be raised, subject to weight considerations, etc., and routings may need altering at other stages of flight in order to avoid CBs. It is often the case that a routing avoiding all encounters with CBs can be flown by good use of the weather radar and liaison with ATC. Judicious use of requests for direct routings can sometimes also give the added benefit of a shorter route. Again cabin crew must be informed according to the likely impact on cabin service and safety. In the event that CBs, with or without thunderstorm, have to be flown through or around during the initial climb or the latter part of the descent, then the only safe option is for the cabin crew to remain seated for the duration of the event. After takeoff this will mean a delay to the start of the service, and prior to landing may require curtailment of the service. However, how important the service might be towards the passengers and the image of the company. Safety should always come first. Serviceability of the weather radar is another vital consideration. Consider the MEL. Flight Operations Manual Part A, 8.3.8 gives you all the guidelines you need regarding adverse weather conditions. Suggested reading is a review of relevant FCOM weather radar. Extra fuel may need to be carried to account for the anticipated use of anti-ice systems, extended routings, or holding at the destination or possibly alternate, awaiting the clearance of thunderstorms before an approach can be commenced. Mechanical turbulence. This is usually associated with strong wind conditions and in general, only affects the lower few thousand feet of the atmosphere, beware standing waves, lee rotor, etc. Which may extend above this. In these circumstances, the same conditions apply to the cabin crew and services mentioned in the section on CB, thunderstorm. The advantage is that the duration is usually brief, whereas with CB it may continue up to a considerable altitude. Crosswinds. Some questions to be addressed during the weather briefing. Will a crosswind on a particular runway cause you any operational problems? Is there a more into wind runway and is it long enough for takeoff and or landing at your anticipated weight? What is the runway state, for example, braking action? Bearing in mind the forecast. Is it reasonable to expect it to stay the same? Is the routing to the other runway a greater or lesser distance and will more fuel be required or less? Are the approach aids operating for that runway and is the weather above minima? Is the company's preferred alternate okay for crosswind? If not, where is it? Is the crosswind within limits for the FO to act as PF? 
Runway state. Should a runway be reported as contaminated or as having a braking action less than good then consider the following. Crosswind limit for current braking action. If contaminated, is it within acceptable limits for the airplane? Cleared length of runway and width of clearance okay? Takeoff performance calculations, regulatory takeoff weight for load sheet? Only toga. Landing performance, regulatory landing weight for load sheet? Technique for takeoff and landing? Captain pilot flying mandatory. Low visibility operations. In the event that a takeoff or landing is likely in conditions at or near to the minima for the anticipated runway, other considerations apply. Airplane serviceability for CAT 2 and CAT 3 ILS approaches? Crew Regency? Takeoff or landing minima as appropriate? Regulatory landing weight for CAT 2 and CAT 3 ops. Go around weight and auto land weights considered? Extra fuel considerations. Special procedures as described in Flight Operations Manual. Approach aid serviceable? Departure alternate needed or not? On route icing forecast. If icing is forecast, consider allowing extra fuel for the use of anti-ice systems. In particular take note of any icing forecast for all anticipated holding flight levels. Extended flight times in such conditions will inevitably result in prolonged use of anti-ice and a consequent increase in fuel burn. Jepson Text Manual Meteorology Aerodrome Weather Forecast Taft Decode for Icing Notums A scan of the notums must be undertaken, this needs to be every bit as thorough and systematic as the check of the weather charts and forecasts. As appropriate the airfields of departure, departure alternate, and route alternate, destination, and alternates need to be checked for their opening hours, serviceability of approach aids, and any changes, temporary or otherwise, to the RFF category. Other items to check include Change departure or arrival procedures Availability of en route nav aids Runway length availability Work in progress, closure of taxiways, runway exit points, etc.